Oh, I'm a scoopy thing in shadow and just my edges are up on light. So there's different ways to describe how things go by the lights and the darks. Colors don't matter. This bear is nothing more than a great big ball. Except when he's chasing you, he's much more than that. <laughs> So we had stories about bear spray uh -huh. at Kathy's house. Her husband got the bear spray on himself and then went potty. Oh. It didn't work oh. well. <laughs> Only those of you that know what bear spray is <laughs> might get the joke. The rest of you in the lower states going, what, is that like a fragrance? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, he had a new, he had a new uh. pot and a new pan oh. and he, was, he took the safety off because he was hiking to the cabin and he didn't want the safety on. We need one of those stories in our lives for every male figure that's out there. But sometimes when they get a little haughty, it's kind of like, honey, I saw a picture of you with diapers and high heels on, huh? Oh. <laughs> that actually made it into the yearbook. He just doesn't know about it this year. <laughs> because he really is cute and he knows it and everybody else knows it. He just needs to be taken down. Just point anyway. <laughs> But I kept my brother in line for years because I talked to him and wear my tutu and I have a picture of him in my pink tutu. And, like, oh, I this. and it's like, I'll whip that out anytime you don't behave. <laughs> All right. So, because Jennifer can make brown anytime she wants to, I choose not to because it's more fun to have a rainbow thing going on than not. Yes, I could mix the orange and the purples together and get browns, but wouldn't it be fun to start out with a kind of undercoat painting that's a little rainbow-ish, and then you can back it off a little. It's a lot harder to take a whole brown bear and all of a sudden make him a little pretty and rainbow-ish. So my goal right now is to say, this ball is light on one side with sunlight hitting it from yellows to oranges. By having it slightly damp ahead of time, we can get that paint slid on there fast. His nose is definitely lighter. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that light for the time being and start working my way back over here to the darker side. So this doesn't matter if it's a cloud, light on one side, dark on the other. Poppy, got sunlight hitting it from one direction, shadow on the other. The same thing is occurring. We're taking and making warm colors hitting the sunny side of them, cool colors hitting the back side. Cool colors are everything that's kind of from that green to that dark red over there. These are all warm over here. Um, let's see, his eyeballs are getting a little... You guys have got bears with different shaped eyes. I have just learned and when we do our, our um, polar bear, they have almond shaped eyes. Do not make them round. Bears are part of the pig family. I didn't know The boar. That's why they're called now boars. Boar bear. Okay. So, they actually have little piggy eyes. But our grizzlies have almond eyes? No, your polar bear. Oh, okay. Polar bears have got almond eyes. Okay. And they do not have much between their head and the neck. It's just like neck that just goes into head. Okay. So generally speaking, you could say, oh, I got a bear that everybody will like because it'll match somebody's couch. Oh, everybody, hang on, it's got a green in there. Now it'll match everybody's couch. Um, have fun with paintings. You know, gee, what would it be like if, I'm just gonna be really rude right now and say, make him run. Does he have to be a solid shape if you want him to be a little less scary? No, he can't be solid. He's gonna be a little nicer. And um, so their noses are lighter in, in color. He's got a yellow nose, but I need to make it still show light. If you think of a light color, it's kind of a version of white. So white in sunlight is gonna be you know lighter. And then on the back side, it's gonna be kind of a purpley gray. So if you start out with kind of a purpley gray versus the rest of the orange, just so you can kind of keep him separately, you can convince the eye to say, okay. And the same thing kind of goes on huskies. Two, I can say he's got sunlight hitting him here, 
this part's in shadow. Yes, he has lots of dark stuff going on, but just to block it in and kind of have a little fun and say, in an effort to kind of keep the fun colors going, you can do that. They have cute pink tongues, something you do not want to see up close. <laughs> what did you use for pink? Fluorescent magenta with white. <laughs> You can work fluorescent magentas into your paintings, just not highlighting on their fannies. Fluorescent paint works tremendously well mixing with other colors. So no joke, I can take like a, a cadmium red and a cad yellow, and I will have a really hard time getting a cad orange. But if I take fluorescent pink or fluorescent magentas and mix it with those yellows, mm -hmm. I get some really awesome Wow. Colors. So it mixes really, I love it mixed with the kind of blues over here to give you some of those almost like, it's almost a slightly fluorescent uh, periwinkle color, what I just can't get with plain old oh. white and plain old purple. Mm -hmm. So he's a great color to mix in with everybody else. Thank you. And what kind of uh, fluorescent magenta? I know that golden. I try to find it too. Each art store gets to choose what colors they want to carry. So I know Golden carries a fluorescent line, but I have not found it regularly in the mixture of other paints available in the stores. I get mine from NovaColorPaints.com and I buy it by the quart size container. Um, I know that, I'm gonna say it really badly, I'm gonna murder it, Romy Dowler, Dowler Romy. Yeah, thank you, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry representatives of the DM company. <laughs> um, the, uh, that particular company, I think downstairs they carry fluorescents. Fluorescents are volatile, meaning they will fade with sunlight. So if you put two layers of UV varnish over the top of this, it will keep it much longer. I've got pieces that have been out there for about 10 years now and still glow. I mix the orange, fluorescent orange, in with my oranges when I want to make a really glowy sunlight hitting a poppy kind of a thing. And I, in fact, you've got the orange. I might come over and hit mine with a couple of yours just to show. So at this point, we're still doing little rainbow color bears here. Black is nothing exciting to look at, whereas a purple is fun, and the sunlight's hitting the top edge, so therefore it's eh, a little bit. I'm gonna do it slightly lighter as if the sunlight's hitting the top edge. So when you have a subject matter, don't just go black. Choose something softer, warmer, grayer down first, then come back in later on and add the rest of it if you need to. Because it's a lot harder to get back in there and get rid of that black. Same thing goes for poppies. You just can't do red, black in the middle. Okay, this side, I'm gonna make it a little bit cooler. <laughs> all, all the areas went, mm. <laughs> I did that yesterday. Okay. So I'm going to darken in a little bit on, on the fact he's got a little darker face. Actually, he's got a little darker on the mouth, too. So we're going to come in here and kind of get some of the value established on the mouth. He's got a pink tongue, so I need to keep the, even the, the darkness on the pinks. Choose like a dark pink, a dark magenta, even a purple, as opposed to don't add black if you can help it just yet. And the lippy edge comes around. Okay, so without getting too much on there and making it boring and brown, you can have fun and just say, oh, I had got you know, a little suggestion of the guy in. Then you say, you know, he is a little bit too much kind of rainbow-ish for my husband to let me hang him in the living room. The kids will hang it in the bedroom, but the husband won't let me hang it in the living room. So mixing complementary colors, yellow and purples. I left my palette open last night, so we actually have, so we can get some pretty browns painting in the direction of your subject matter. If he's got hair that's coming out here, you know, <coughs> paint in that direction and leave painterly brush strokes if you can, as opposed to, I love my rainbow here right now and I'm gonna lose it anyway. Um, hmm. Because if you go, you know, it just looks like he's, that doesn't describe his shape at all. And the fun thing about acrylics, if you don't like what's there and you wet out your surface, you can wipe it off a little bit, start over. Oh, that one's done for. Jennifer, we were talking about the textures of your stuff. Uh -huh. 
with the hair, like if you put a paint on like you're doing now, and then maybe went through with some other kind of texture to bring it, make it look hair-like. Texture meaning brush stroke, texture? Uh, yeah, or um, maybe something thicker, thicker, like maybe even a comb kind of thing. You could do that too. So here's your assignment. Find something that you really like with texture and go do seven versions of it using seven different products. Because that's how you're gonna learn. And as artists, if we do things in groups and series, you know, Picasso had his group here. Um, you learn and you get a feel for, boy, I sure know that every time I do that, that guy, he has to have a value of something like that to say he's in shadow over here behind his chin. So I definitely need to come in here and say, it might have been a lovely little rainbow color, but it didn't say bear in shadow. So I'm working my purple, blues, oranges kind of combos, making browns. So you look at all those fun colors of browns as opposed to straight out of a tube and dyed brown or whatever else you, you may own. 